Ancient History of Afghanistan, published February the 19th, 2018. Further information can be found at the end of this recording. Archaeological exploration of the pre-Islamic period of Afghanistan began in Afghanistan in earnest after World War II and proceeded until the late 1970s when the nation was invaded by the Soviet Union. Archaeologists and historians suggest that humans were living in Afghanistan at least 50,000 years ago, and that farming communities of the region were among the earliest in the world. Urbanized culture has existed in the land from between 3000 and 2000 BC. Artifacts typical of the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Bronze, and Iron Ages have been found inside Afghanistan. After the Indus Valley civilization which stretched up to northeast Afghanistan, it was inhabited by the Iranic tribes and controlled by the Medes until about 500 BC when Darius the Great. Darius I marched with his Persian army to make it part of the Achaemenid Empire. In 330 BC, Alexander the Great of Macedonia invaded the land after defeating Darius II I of Persia in the Battle of Gorgamela. Much of Afghanistan became part of the Seleucid Empire followed by the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom. The area south of the Hindu Kush had been given by Seleucusini Keita to Chandragupta Mora and became part of the Maura Empire. The land was inhabited by various tribes and ruled by many different kingdoms for the next two millenniums. Before the arrival of Islam in the 7th century, there were a number of religions practiced in ancient Afghanistan, including Zoroastrianism, Suya worship, Paganism, Hinduism and Buddhism. The Kafiristan region, in the Hindu Kush, was not converted until the 19th century. Part 1 Prehistoric Era. Louis Dupree, the University of Pennsylvania, the Smithsonian Institution and others suggest that humans were living in Afghanistan at least 50,000 years ago, and that farming communities of the region were among the earliest in the world. Quote, Archaeologists have found evidence of human habitation in Afghanistan from as far back as 50,000 BC. The artifacts indicate that the indigenous people were small farmers and herdsmen, as they are today, very probably grouped into tribes, with small local kingdoms rising and falling through the ages. Afghanistan seems in prehistory, as well as in ancient and modern times, to have been connected by culture and trade with the neighboring regions. Urban civilization, which includes modern-day Afghanistan, North India, and Pakistan, may have been as early as 3000 to 2000 BC. Archaeological finds indicate the possible beginnings of the Bronze Age, which would ultimately spread throughout the ancient world from Afghanistan. It is also believed that the region had early trade contacts with Mesopotamia. Part 1 – Prehistoric Era Chapter 1 – Indus Valley Civilization The Indus Valley Civilization IVC was a Bronze Age civilization. 3300-1300 BCE, mature period 2600 to 1900 BCE, extending from what today is northwest Pakistan to northwest India and northeast Afghanistan. An Indus Valley site has been found on the Oxus River at Shortchuga in northern Afghanistan. Apart from Shorter Eyes Mundagak, another notable site. There are several smaller the Fourth Sea colonies to be found in Afghanistan. Part 2 Aryans and the Medes Rule 1500 BC 551 BC Between 2000 1200 BC a branch of Indo-European speaking tribes known as the Aryans began migrating into the region. This is part of a dispute in regards to the Aryan invasion theory. They appear to have split into Iranic peoples, Nuristani, and Indo-Aryan groups at an early stage, possibly between 1500 and 1000 BC in what is today Afghanistan or much earlier as East and remnants of the Indo-Aryans drifted much further west as with the Mitanni. The Iranians dominated the modern-day plateau, 
while the Indo Air Irons ultimately headed towards the Indian subcontinent. The Avesta is believed to have been composed possibly as early as 1800 BC and written in ancient Ariana. Air Ayana. The earliest name of Afghanistan which indicates an earlier link with today's Iranian tribes to the west or adjacent regions in Central Asia or northeastern Iran in the 6th century BC, due to the similarity between early Avestan and Sanskrit and other related early Indo-European languages such as Latin and Ancient Greek. It is believed that the split between the old Persians and Indo-Aryan tribes had taken place at least by 1000 BC. There are striking similarities between Avestan and Sanskrit which may support the notion that the split was contemporary with the Indo-Aryans living in Afghanistan at a very early stage. Also, the Avesta itself divides into old and new sections and neither mention the Medes who are known to have ruled Afghanistan starting around 700 BC. This suggests an early time frame for the Avesta that has yet to be exactly determined as most academics believe it was written over the course of centuries if not millennia. Much of the archaeological data comes from the Bactria Marjana archaeological complex. BMC and Indus Valley Civilization That probably played a key role in early Aryanic civilization in Afghanistan. The Medes, a Western Persian people, arrived from what is today Kurdistan sometime around the 700 BC and came to dominate most of ancient Afghanistan. Citation needed they were an early tribe that forged the first empire on the present Iranian plateau and were rivals of the Persians whom they initially dominated in the province of Fars to the south. Median domination of parts of far off Afghanistan would last until the Persians challenged and ultimately replaced them from rule. Part 3 Achmanid Invasion and Zoroastrianism 550 BC 331 BC The city of Bactria, which later became Balkh, is believed to have been the home of Zarathustra, who founded the Zoroastrian religion. The Avesta refers to Eastern Bactria as being the home of the Zoroastrian faith, but this can be a reference to either a region in modern Afghanistan or borderline of Afghan Pakistan. Regardless of the debate as to where Zoroaster was from, Zoroastrianism spread to become one of the world's most influential religions and became the main faith of the old Aryan people for centuries. It also remained the official religion of Persia until the defeat of the Sasanian ruler Yazdjurd II. Over a thousand years after its founding by Muslim Arabs in what is today southern Iran, the Persians emerged to challenge Median supremacy on the Iranian plateau. By 550 BC, the Persians had replaced Median rule with their own dominion and even began to expand past previous Median imperial borders. Both Gandhara and Kamboja Mahajana Pardas of the Buddhist text soon fell a prey to the Achmenian dynasty during the reign of Achmenid, Cyrus the Great. 558-530 BC or in the first year of Darius I, marking the region or of the easternmost provinces of the empire, located partly in nowadays Afghanistan. According to Plinus evidence, Cyrus the Great, Cyrus II, had destroyed Kapisa in Kapasine which was a Cambodia city. The former region of Gandhara and Cambodia, Upper Indus had constituted 7th satrapy of the Achmanid Empire and annually contributed 170 talents of gold dust as a tribute to the Achmanids. Bactria had a special position in old Afghanistan, being the capital of a vice kingdom. By the 4th century BC, Persian control of outlying areas and the internal cohesion of the empire had become somewhat tenuous. Although distant provinces like Bactriana had often been restless under Achmanid rule, Bactrian troops nevertheless fought in the decisive Battle of Gorgamela in 330 BC against the advancing armies of Alexander the Great. The Achmenids were decisively defeated by Alexander and retreated from his advancing army of Greco-Macedonians and their allies. 
Darius II, the last Achaemenid ruler, tried to flee to Bactria but was assassinated by a subordinate lord, the Bactrian-born Bessus, who proclaimed himself the new ruler of Persia as Artaxerxes. V. Bessus was unable to mount a successful resistance to the growing military might of Alexander's army so he fled to his native, Bactria, where he attempted to rally local tribes to his side but was instead turned over to Alexander who proceeded to have him tortured and executed for having committed regicide. Part 4, Alexander the Great to Greco-Bactrian Rule 330 BC circa 150 BC Moving thousands of kilometers eastward from recently subdued Persia, the Macedonian leader Alexander the Great encountered fierce resistance from the local tribes of Arya, Satrapi, Drangiana, Arakosia, South and Eastern Afghanistan, Northwest Pakistan, and Bactria, North and Central Afghanistan. Upon Alexander's death in 323 BC, his empire, which had never been politically consolidated, broke apart as his companions began to divide it amongst themselves. Alexander's cavalry commander, Seleucus, took nominal control of the eastern lands and founded the Seleucid dynasty. Under the Seleucids, as under Alexander, Greek colonists and soldiers colonized Bactria, roughly corresponding to modern Afghanistan's borders. However, the majority of Macedonian soldiers of Alexander the Great wanted to leave the east and return home to Greece. Later, Seleucus sought to guard his eastern frontier and moved Ionian Greeks, also known as Yelvanas to many local groups, to Bactria in the 3rd century BC. Part 4, Alexander the Great to Greco-Bactrian Rule Chapter 1, Mora Empire. While the Diadoche were warring amongst themselves, the Mauryan Empire was developing in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. The founder of the empire, Chandragupta Mauryan, confronted a Macedonian invasion force led by Seleucus I in 305 BC and following a brief conflict, an agreement was reached as Seleucus ceded Gandhara and Arakosia, centered around ancient Kandahar, and areas south of Bagram corresponding to the extreme southeast of modern Afghanistan. To the Mauryans. During the 120 years of the Mauryans in southern Afghanistan, Buddhism was introduced and eventually become a major religion alongside Zoroastrianism and local pagan beliefs. The ancient Grand Trunk Road was built linking what is now Kabul to various cities in the Punjab and the Gangetic Plain, commerce, art, and architecture seen especially in the construction of stupas. Developed during this period, it reached its high point under Emperor Ashoka whose edicts, roads, and rest stops were found throughout the subcontinent. Although the vast majority of them throughout the subcontinent were written in Prakrit, Afghanistan is notable for the inclusion of Tigreek and Aramaic ones alongside the court language of the Mauryans. Inscriptions made by the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka a fragment of Edict 13 in Greek, as well as a full edict, written in both Greek and Aramaic has been discovered in Kandahar. It is said to be written in excellent classical Greek, using sophisticated philosophical terms. In this edict, Ashoka uses the word euspaia, piety, as the Greek translation for the ubiquitous dharma of his other edicts written in Prakrit, ten years of reign. Having been completed, King P. Bass's Ashoka made known the doctrine of piety, euspaia, to men, and from this moment he has made men more pious, and everything thrives throughout the whole world, and the king abstains from killing living beings, and other men and those who are Huntsmen and fishermen of the king have desisted from hunting. And if some were intemperate, they have ceased from their intemperance as was in their power, and obedient to their father and mother and to the elders, 
in opposition to the past also in the future, by so acting on every occasion, they will live better and more happily. Trans. By G.P. Caratelli. The last ruler in the region was probably Subhagasena. Sophagasenus of Polybius. Who, in all probability, belonged to the Ashvaka. Q.V. Background. Part 4, Alexander the Great to Greco-Bactri in Rule Chapter 2, Greco-Bactrians. In the middle of the 3rd century BC, an independent, Hellenistic state was declared in Bactria and eventually the control of the Seleucids and Mauryans was overthrown in western and southern Afghanistan. Greco-Bactrian rule spread until it included a large territory which stretched from Turkmenistan in the west to the Punjab in India in the east by about 170 BC. Greco-Bactrian rule was eventually defeated by a combination of internecine disputes that plagued Greek and Hellenized rulers to the west, continual conflict with Indian kingdoms, as well as the pressure of two groups of nomadic invaders from Central Asia. The Parthians and Sarkas. Part 5, Kushan Empire. 150 BC 300 AD. In the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, the Parthians, a nomadic Iranian peoples, arrived in Western Asia. While they made large inroads into the modern day territory of Afghanistan, about 100 years later another Indo-European group from the north. The Kushans. A subgroup of the tribe called the Yuzhi by the Chinese. Entered the region of Afghanistan and established an empire lasting almost four centuries, which would dominate most of the Afghanistan region. The Kushan Empire spread from the Kabul River Valley to defeat other Central Asian tribes that had previously conquered parts of the northern central Iranian plateau once ruled by the Parthians. By the middle of the 1st century BC, the Kushan's base of control became Afghanistan and their empire spanned from the north of the Pamir Mountains to the Ganges River Valley in India. Early in the 2nd century under Kanishka, the most powerful of the Kushan rulers, the empire reached its greatest geographic and cultural breadth to become a center of literature and art. Kanishka extended Kushan control to the mouth of the Indus River on the Arabian Sea, into Kashmir, and into what is today the Chinese-controlled area north of Tibet. Kanishka was a patron of religion and the arts. It was during his reign that Buddhism, which was promoted in northern India earlier by the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka. C. 260 BC 232 BC reached its zenith in Central Asia. Though the Kushanas supported local Buddhists and Hindus as well as the worship of various local deities. Part 6 Sasanian Invasion 300 650 In the 3rd century. Kushan control fragmented into semi-independent kingdoms that became easy targets for conquest by the rising Iranian dynasty, the Sasanians. C. 224-561 Which annexed Afghanistan by 300 AD. In these far-off easternmost territories, they established vassal kings as rulers, known as the Kushanshas. Sasanian control was tenuous at times as numerous challenges from Central Asian tribes led to instability and constant warfare in the region. The Dasunitid Kushan and Sasanian kingdoms were in a poor position to meet the threat of a new wave of nomadic, Indo-European invaders from the north. The Hephthalites, or White Huns, swept out of Central Asia around the 4th century into Bactria and to the south overwhelming the last of the Kushan and Sasanian kingdoms. Some have speculated that the name Afghanistan land of the Afghans derives from which could be an adjective such as brave, chivalrous, valor, which was too use for the people in today's Afghanistan. Historians believe that Hephthalite light control continued for a century and was marked by constant warfare with the Sasanians to the west who exerted nominal control over the region. By the middle of the 6th century the Hephthalites were defeated in the territories north of the Amu Darya. 
the Oxus River of Antiquity. By another group of Central Asian nomads, the Gokturks, and by the resurgent Sasanians in the land south of the Amudaya. It was the ruler of Western Gokturks, Sijin. A dot k dot a. Sinjibu, Silzabal and Yandu Machu Khan. Who led the forces against the Hephthalites who were defeated at the Battle of Chach. Tashkent. And at the Battle of Bukhara. Part 7. Kabul Shahi. The Shahi dynasties ruled portions of the Kabul Valley. In eastern Afghanistan. And the old province of Kandahar. Northern Pakistan and Kashmir. From the decline of the Kushan Empire in the 3rd century to the early 9th century. They are split into two eras the Buddhist Shahis and the later Hindu Shahis with the change over occurring around 870 and ruled up until the Islamic conquest of Afghanistan. When Zhu Anzang visited the region early in the 7th century, the Kabul region was ruled by a Kshatriya king, who is identified as the Shahi Kingal, and whose name has been found in an inscription found in Gardez. The Turkic Shahi Regency was overthrown and replaced by a Mohil Shahi dynasty of Brahmins who began the first phase of the Hindu Shahi Hindu Shahi dynasty. These Hindu kings of Kabul and Gandhara may have had links to some ruling families in neighboring Kashmir and other areas to the east. The Shahis were rulers of predominantly Buddhist, Zoroastrian, Hindu and Muslim populations and with us patrons of numerous faiths and various artifacts and coins from their rule have been found that display their multicultural domain. In 964 AD, the last Mohil Shahi was succeeded by the Janjua overlord, Jayapala, of the Pandavanshi dynasty. The last Shahi emperors Jayapala, Anandipala and Durlak Hanpala fought the Muslim Ghaznavids of Ghazna and were gradually defeated. Their remaining army were eventually exiled into northern India. Part 8. Archaeological Remnants Most of the Zoroastrian, Greek, Hellenistic, Buddhist, Hindu and other indigenous cultures were replaced by the coming of Islam and little influence remains in Afghanistan today. Along ancient trade routes, however, stone monuments of the once flourishing Buddhist culture did exist as reminders of the past. The two massive sandstone Buddhas of Bamiyan, 35 and 53 meters high overlooked the ancient route through Bamiyan to Balgand dated from the 3rd and 5th centuries. They survived until 2001, when they were destroyed by the Taliban. In this and other key places in Afghanistan, archaeologists have located frescoes, stucco decorations, statuary, and rare objects from as far away as China, Phoenicia, and Rome which were crafted as early as the second century and bear witness to the influence of these ancient civilizations upon Afghanistan. One of the early Buddhist schools, the Mahasafghika Lakata Ravada, were known to be prominent in the area of Baman. The Chinese Buddhist monk Zhu Anzang visited Lakata Ravada Monastery in the 7th century CE, at Baman, Afghanistan and this monastery site has since been rediscovered by archaeologists. Burke Bark and Palmerleaf manuscripts of texts in this monastery's collection, including Mahayana Sutras, have been discovered at the site, and these are now located in the Shoyan collection. Some manuscripts are in the Gandhari language and Khaarofhi script, while others are in Sanskrit and written in forms of the Gupta script. Manuscripts and fragments that have survived from this monastery's collection include well-known Buddhist texts such as the Mahaparinirva Fe Sutra, from the Agamas, the Diamond Sutra, Varaka Edika Prajna Paramita, the Medicine Buddha Sutra, and the Sremala Devi Sifhanada Sutra. In 2010, Reports stated that about 42 Buddhist relics have been discovered in the Loga province of Afghanistan, which is south of Kabul. Some of these items date back to the second century according to archaeologists. The items included two Buddhist temples, stupas, Buddha statues, 
frescoes, silver and gold coins and precious beads. Quote. There is a temple, stupas, beautiful rooms, big and small statues, two with the length of seven and nine meters, colorful frescoes ornamented with gold and some coins. Some of the relics date back to the 5th century. A D. We have come across signs that there are items may be going back to the era before Christ or prehistory. We need foreign assistance to preserve these and their expertise to help us with further excavations. Mohammad Nader Asoli, Afghan Archaeological Department. Special characters in this article were substituted with audio cues. They were denoted as follows. And. Beginning and ending single or double quotations. And. Left and right parentheses. An M dash. Three consecutive periods. This recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, to commission recordings like this, and to support the developer, please visit www.patreon.com/frogcast.